Hello and welcome back to Love Shore. Yeah, I decided to actually give Farah a run for this demo as well. Last time we already had a look at Sam. Um, because yeah, the story is supposed to be different for her and she has completely yeah, her own love interests. We thought, why not? Why not have a look at that as well? So I already talked a bit more about the game in the other video if you want to check it out. I also won't go over these texts again, but feel free to pause and read if you only care about Pharaoh's side of things, I guess. But yeah, I'm interested to see if it's really going to be completely different. I mean, that's that's what they said it would be. The story is intertwined, but yeah. The year was 3000 something. Lovesure, a shining beacon of technological advancement, faced an unexpected threat. Fertility crisis on the rise. Despite the city's overwhelming confidence, its bright neon lights and considerable tourism, the packed urban oasis was ill-equipped to deal with the prepare event. Still don't know how to pronounce it. With an infertility scare plaguing plaguing its citizens, Lovesure faced the biggest crisis of its time. A new savior, Life S. Either by divine providence or cruel chance, Life S arrived. With a promise of creating life and keeping it healthy, beautiful and young, Life S took organic bodies and placed their essential organs into inorganic ones, breathing life through machines and wires. It saved my family, I suppose. Gave them a healthy daughter, one that could help provide for her human parents. Life as saved a hundred lives in Lovesure, made a hundred as humans who represented a new wave of advancement in the city. And yet, when the prebear event had passed, the company had failed, vanishing into obscurity. Life S was dead, but all of us, but all us, the leftover as humans. End of an era, the fall of Life S. We who are more alive than ever. I thought my life was over after my body was shipped back home. My mind was organic, but my body wasn't. Us humans were supposed to be tougher than this. The good thing is, when you're a S human, you can rebuild. What the hell? No, oh, yeah. Alarm clock. I reach over to slap the snooze button off before my heart rate sc spikes any further, staring at the ceiling, just breathing. Easy. Just relax, kid. Kind of forgot about alarm clocks. Right. The early morning light seeps through the dusty blinds I'd pulled shut last night. The night I'd finally gotten home from prison. I don't even think I have any food lying around. I heave myself out of bed, my shoulders still feeling stiff and unwieldy from the new freedom of motion. Hibernation for months on end, on a cold, concrete prison cell bench, really doesn't do wonders for your joints. I knuckle the tension out of my prosthetic knees, flexing the spring-loaded tendons as I go. Well, shit. Things weren't looking good. The tendons were way too tight, and I could feel the ball joints in my ankles grinding against the supports. 
Looks like nobody had bothered to rotate or oil the prosthetics while I was in hibernation. Typical. Farah? Is it been slow on loading again? Hello? Vera, you in there? I hobble up from my seat on the edge of the bed. The nerves where my legs end and the prosthetics twinge as I go. Ow! Damn it! Wait, was that... Talia? What's up, asshole? I thought I told you to call me when you were getting released. Talia, my oldest and best friend from my time in the military. She's in her early 30s, but has the energy of a 19-year-old. I'm still not sure how she does it. Sorry, my phone was dead and they kinda just tossed me in a cab and sent me on my way home. Talia gives me an unreadable look and glances over my shoulder at the apartment, raising an eyebrow. I'm suddenly extremely aware of the fact that everything is still covered in at least a year's worth of dust. I mean, as if the first thing you do when you get home from prison... Dusting? What? Oh, okay. You could have left me a key so I could pick up the place. No way, I wouldn't have asked you to. I know you'd never ask for any help whatsoever. I'm sorry, Talia. I didn't really say goodbye to her before I was carted off. I'm sure she's not happy with me. It's okay. I accept your apology, you dumbass. Bullying a girl who just got out of hibernation? Harsh. You know my reactions. My reaction time's not what it should be. I'm sure you can take it. She rolls her eyes at me and we sit on the edge of the bed, still messy from the night previous. So, you definitely don't have anything to do today. She's right, of course. You wanna get breakfast with me? Tell me about, your, about what you wanna do? Okay, now I wanna spend some time alone today, or oh, hell yeah. Oh right, I'm still wondering if if you're already setting off like which path you're going on with these first choices, like right from the get-go, which is mm, on one hand it makes sense if you got really Yeah, these not connected stories. But then again, I kind of like to get to know the love interest a bit more before I decide on who to go with. I mean, both can be fun. Um, but I mean, breakfast, always. I kind of forgot what breakfast tastes like, to be honest. They really only fed us these gross nutrient IVs. Well, I'd be happy to reacquaint you. She moseys over to my dresser, opening up the top drawer and brushing off a jacket for me, tossing it behind her, behind her towards my general direction. I can feel my shoulder groan as I go to catch it, but at least I don't miss. Hey, what did I just say about slow reaction time? Consider this your own personal training session. As she finishes, she tosses a new pair of socks over her other shoulder, hitting me square in the face. 
Fantastic. Just what I need. I just woke up, you know. Oh, I know. Let's go, babe. Ugh. We've never had an emotional, touchy-feely kind of relationship. Talia is more of an action-speak-louder-than-words kind of person. I like that about her. I take the clothes she's been tossing at me and throw them on to the best of my ability. We make our way out of the apartment building, down to street level. At least the old cafe down the street was still open. You're saying not, not emotional? relationship but that seemed very comfortable like friends that are very comfortable uh, with each other and I like that. Love show by day was pleasant enough if busy. My apartment building was part of the developments that came on hard and fast as the city sprung up with a 24-hour system in the aftermath of the fertility crisis. Free bear event they'd called it. Yeah, some of the same lore we're getting here, of course. Better told, better future. Mm -hmm. Pregnancies were failing at an astounding rate, and nobody knew why. Love Shore was forced to take drastic measures, and that's when the Life S Company engineered us, the S Humans. Genetic genetically related to our parents with organic brains, but with tough biologic biologically simul simulated bodies specifically designed to protect us, the new golden kids of Love Shore. In jail, the hours drag on, and you eventually lose sight of everything you thought you knew about yourself. When your body doesn't grow old, time can stand still in a way most humans can't understand. I was put into hibernation for brawling, injuring a fellow citizen. It's just a fancy term for months on end of solitary confinement. I remember rage and a kind of bone-deep fear I hadn't felt since my time in active duty. After that, all I had were memories of being restrained immediately after my trial and then waking up, sitting in a use useless husk of a body. Immobile until my release. I guess I had a lot of time to think while I wasn't there. Hey, you want to stop in here? Uh, sure, why not? The cafe was sim was familiar, but everything else was still overwhelming. People walking around, a busy street. It was almost too much after being alone with just my thoughts and Sam's face for company. Sam. I hadn't seen him in the apartment building when we left. I wonder if he was alright. Talia picked up some sandwiches for us and we mended back down the street towards the apartment. We don't talk much. She looks thoughtful. Farah? Yeah? What happened to you in there? I don't... I feel like I can't comprehend it. If I look at it too closely, I... It all comes flooding back and it's like I never left. It's okay if you can't look at it head on right now. You just got out yesterday, for Christ's sake. I can't leave her hanging like this. Come on, Farah, you got to tell us something. Well, for one thing, I was seated right across from Sam, in the prison cell. I'm sorry, what? Sam? As in your weird neighbor Sam? That Sam? Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do about it. Okay. But you know he still lives above you? I saw him coming out of the building a few days ago. Shit. How long would it be before I ran into him? Not exactly a conversation I'd look forward to having. 
Hey, so I stared into your eyes for about uh, two years in solitary confinement and maybe Sota could tell what you were thinking. We have some kind of weird mutual bond now and also, by the way, we're still neighbors. Oh. Oh, great. I better drop you back off soon. I got a meeting at the VA to facilitate. You really never stop, huh? Couldn't pay me to stop, hon. A bond, interesting. I don't know if Sam mentioned that. Is he aware of it? He said it was awkward, like he didn't want to talk to her necessarily, but... Hmm. After Talia heads off, I make my way back home. I couldn't think of much else to do besides sit at my kitchen table and eat my damn sandwich and wash some of the dust off of my dishes. Cleaning up things felt good, felt productive. The sensation of soap and water on my hands is weird. It still feels foreign. By the time night falls, I'm itching for something else to do. I'm just wondering now, it's... I mean, it's... Hibernation. It's a bit like being in a coma, just being awake. And obviously it's not quite the same, but maybe you can equate it to that. But if you were in a coma, you'd still get some, like... What is that? Rehabilitation? Training? Like, they get to... Oh, they get your body back like, used to movement, right? But she didn't get this. She was just, yeah, dropped off at home and here, go deal with it yourself. Huh. Tough. By the time night falls, I'm itching for something else to do. Maybe going to Persephone's would be a good enough distraction. I grab my jacket and head back out. Persephone's wasn't a large bar, but still was somehow the kind that you could get lost in. With enough nooks and crannies for private conversation, but with an expansive liquor selection to draw a crowd every night. It was a reliable locale where all kinds of people, both human and as human, could get lost in their drinks with only a slight amount of judgement. I recognize the bartender, Maya. Hello. I make my way through a few early evening barflies to lean on the sleek bar top. Neon ads reflect behind her, glowing through her strawberry blonde waves. Para? Para! She's as, jo go she's as gorgeous as ever. Not that she's changed at all since I got put away. A as human, like me, Maya had had some side business with the underworld that she didn't like to talk about. At least, not while she was behind the bar. She's always professional like that, cool and collected. Good at playing her part in whatever group ran the place. I had no idea when you were getting out. She reaches a hand out across the bar to rest on my forearm. I hate to say it, but you look like you need a drink. I hate to say it, but I really need a drink. I think I can help you out with that. Same as usual. At this point, I think it'll... I'll take anything you got. She pours me a good sized rum and coke and gently slides it across the bar to me. She looks inquisitive. So, I suppose I won't get away with people leaving me alone today. With Maya, I don't mind so much. I still drain half the drink in a few large gulps. 
I saw your cellmate the other day. I choked on the last gulp of my drink. You what? How did you know... Sam, right? I guess you could call him a regular around here. We have mutual friends. For fuck's sake. Of course he was. Sam had been released a few weeks before I was. Oddly enough, that part of my sentence had dragged on the longest of all. I didn't think it was possible for silence to get any lonelier. He mentioned you all of once. I was surprised that he even admitted that he knows you, but he also knows we... talk. Talk, okay. Yeah, well, it's not really his business what he knows about me and you. He's a snake, but he's an entertaining snake at least. I'd known he was shady. Even before our jail sentence, I'd noticed him coming and going at odd hours, meeting all sorts of people outside the apartment building. And that doesn't have to mean anything. I had barely considered that Maya might have known him through mutual friends. Whatever the hell that meant, she always just seemed so put together. Again, doesn't mean anything. Takes all types, I suppose. It's not like we did a lot of talking in hibernation. No, I suppose you wouldn't. I drained the rest of my drink as fast as seems gorgeous and pushed the glass across the counter. Thanks for that. I'll get you back when I can start collecting my disability checks again. Maya waves a hand loosely. Don't worry about it. On the house today. I turn to exit the bar when her voice echoes out after me, sending a chill down my spine. And Farah? Welcome back to Love Shore. Okay. As much as I hate to admit it, Maya makes Persephone an attractive place to be. But I can't stay there forever. Well, you stayed, what, five minutes? Okay. I haven't even checked up on my prosthetics and my joints are all aching already. The clinic, like the rest of the city, operates on a full 24-hour schedule. With the underground businesses taking over the town at night, the injuries, accidents and bodies tend to pile up at all hours of the day. I mean, that's not necessarily new. Accidents can always happen. The building is one of the biggest in Love Shore, and luckily for people like me, the staff usually features at least one or two as human specialists on call for when we come in with any odd damage to our bodies. I make my way to front desk where a beleaguered looking receptionist sits. I can't really help but feel a faint glimmer of hope rise in my chest. I'd be stupid if I didn't check and see if Imani was here. You have an appointment? I'm looking for a Dr. Imani Santero. Santero, Santero, hmm. The receptionist flicks through a tablet with what looks like schedules and shift lists. Nope, she's not on today. Hasn't been in for a week now. A week? Is she alright? Is she on leave? I'm not sure, miss. She hasn't called in sick, so she must be on leave. Out of nowhere, I get a sinking feeling of dread in my stomach. No, it must be fine. She must just be taking a short leave. Oh, something. I... I guess I'll see whoever's available. As human-specific, with prosth prosthetics training? 
Take a seat. It's gonna be a while. Great. Just what I want. More time to be alone with my thoughts. The waiting was all head to me at this point and sitting in the clinic's waiting room, I do my best not to run disaster scenarios where Imani, my old doctor, didn't run off to the opposite end of the country or come down with some ins in in insane disease or... Before I can catastrophize too much, they're calling me into a clinic room. The young resident makes quick work of adjusting the tension on my legs and resetting the joints, checking all the nerve connections and making sure the rest of me hasn't atrophied completely. Atrophied? Much better. What? What the hell was that? Hey, what's your problem? A shape that looks suspiciously like a person flashes across my vision, running behind the corner of the hospital. You! What's the deal? Just what I need. Shadowy individuals trying to take my picture. I jog to the corner and... Nothing. Fantastic. That startled me, to be honest. Heaving a sigh, I turned to head back home. The neon of the buildings glowed brighter as the evening darkness deepened, and I wove my way through the night crowd back to the apartment building. A crack of thunder peals overhead. Just my luck. I fumble for my key for a minute before pushing open the door to my apartment and throwing my jacket on a chair. I guess I left my cell back here while I was out. Huh? Imani? My heart drops straight into the pit of my stomach. How could she have known I was looking for her? These sections really have a long loading time. I don't know if it's my PC, but yeah, if you saw the other video with Sam, he also had a problem with this loading time and I wasn't alone on that. I saw in the Steam forum that other people had this issue as well. Well, maybe all of our computers just suck, who knows. I'm just hoping they're optimizing it a bit for the, for the full game. As long as it works at all, that, uh, that'd be great. But yeah. Come on. <sighs> yeah. So for Sam it took like, I don't know, like two minutes or something. So if you want to try skipping ahead, feel free. Just, yeah. As long as it works at all. Money, money. Tell me what you gotta say. Farah, it's Imani. I know that you were just released and I'm sorry to do this to you, but I need help. Desperately. 
I have some information about a project that might affect a whole a lot of people in the city. It's related to Love Shows Underworld. You're the only one I can trust right now. Please. Just call me back as soon as you get this. All of this was too coincidental. Imani's voice sounded truly, legitimately terrified. And what was that about a project? About the criminal underworld? There's no way that Imani's not in trouble right now. And if she's missing, I could be the only one who knows she's in deep, deep trouble. Well, fuck. Okay, now we're going to call. Oh, interesting. We could call Sam or Imani. Huh. Well, we're going to try with Imani for sure. I should try and call her back and see if she can get to her phone. The phone rings. And rings. And rings some more. Okay, we could leave a voicemail or hang up. Ooh, interesting. I think I want to leave a voicemail, but I'm having some doubts that it's... That it might be... Might be affecting her negatively in case someone else listens to the voicemail, you know? But I want to try. I should leave her a message. If she can still get to her cell, at least she'll know I'm looking for her. Come on. Oh, I think here yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing the smiley move up. So it's not... It's not the MC's mood here, but the one of the love interest? Is it? Huh. A bit unclear to me so far. Especially because it said there was like a hidden approval system, right? But again, the cell loading times. Hmm. Yeah. Advanced technology of the future. <laughs> Reception's probably also bad, eh? There's just some stuff that's never really being fixed. Although I thought that was more of a problem we have here in Germany. <laughs> yeah, come on, I just wanna just wanna leave the voicemail. By the way, this will come out on both uh, PC as well as on Xbox. So I don't know if there will be any differences in performance depending on what platform you play it on. I don't have an Xbox. Imani, it's me, Farah. I'm going to find you, no matter what. Hang tight. I'm on my way. Stay safe, please. I have to try someone else. Sam has some connections to the underworld. Of course. Of course. This was bound to be awkward, to say the very least. Here we were, two people who barely ran in the same circles, and I was about to call them up to hunt down some crush. Ugh. But if anyone knew where someone would go to hide in Lovejoy, it would be Sam. Well, patience. 
But also interesting because when she came back to the apartment and checked the phone, I was pretty much expecting it to be the call from Sam that we had on his side of the story. Just wondering if that's going to happen no matter what. Or if you're always going to have only one side. Hmm. Because the stories are supposed to take place like in parallel. And only intertwine here and there. Or maybe it can also depend on... Yeah, which route, which which love interest you're, you're picking, or I mean, I mentioned this uh, in the other video. You don't have to actually go with the romance route. You can just be friends with your companions, or is the official term they're using? But yeah, uh, depending on your decisions, you still get put on certain routes. Checking my notes again, it was said to have eight storylines, so with each of the main characters having four companions, that makes sense. And then a whole lot of endings, 25 plus. So, a lot of possibilities, if it works. Who is this? Hi, uh, it's Farah from jail. Oh, how the hell did you get this number? He sounds agitated. Jumpy. Friend of a friend, I kind of need to ask for your expertise. Oh, come on, we just got out of jail. It's not illegal, I don't think. I'm trying to go straight. Not like that, you know, following the law or whatever. Besides, I'm kinda busy. Someone I care about is in serious trouble and she's gone. And I don't know how I'm going to find her. I can tell that my desperation is bleeding through, but I need him to know that I'm not fucking around. Fine. But nothing in this world is free. A favor then. I'll help you out with something when you need it. Bold of you to think I'd need your help. Though, you're in luck. I'm banking on that favor right now. Can you come over to foyer viewing? Ah, okay, it is interconnected here. A pawn shop? What the hell? Fine. All right. Favor time. I gotta go. All right. Don't freak out or anything, but... Can you help me carry him? Yeah, there he is. What the actual hell? No offense, but you better have some impeccable help for me once we get done with this... Whoever this is. Relax, he's not dead. I think. Ha ha, very funny. Did you shoot him? No, hell no. He just kinda stumbled in. Questions later. Let's get him back to my place. We managed to heave the stranger onto the only clean space in Sam's apartment. The bed. Sam seems scared. He goes to touch the man's chest, but I stop him. I've been through too much this evening to put off Imani much longer. Alright, so what's the deal? You seemed, uh, worried. 
on the phone. It's about someone I know, a Dr. Imani Santero. You've heard of her? Yeah, the S human specialist, right? Now I'm actually remembering this conversation. Well, she was doing a variety of experiments for one. Ones that apparently could have gotten her in trouble. I got this weird voicemail. She said she needed my help and... And I don't know if she has anyone else to help her. I can feel a lump forming in my throat, but I will, I will it back down. There's no way I'm going to cry in front of Sam. Especially when he made me help carry a half-dead body to his house. I can think of some people who might know where she would be. No promises, of course. I'll ask around. You could try Ganesha Demolition, Asia Information Hub, or Persephone, the lady behind the bar. Who will it be? Hmm... Well, we already were at Persephone, though we didn't know at that point in time about, yeah, Imani having vanished. Uh, what are you saying? Demolition? Information hub? Nah, let's go to the bar. Alright, I'll look around for you. If he ever wakes up. Anyone ever tell you you got a real way with words? Just speaking the truth, pal. Maybe I should cut him some slack. He's worrying his bottom lip and won't stop glancing back over at the dead undead guy. Listen, I don't know shit about human medicine. I know you don't need to do this, but can you help him? At all? Alright, I can't do much for him, or absolutely not. I mean, why wouldn't we try, right? Um, don't think we can do much for him, but... And I mean, we know what happens from Sam's run through, playthrough. Mm. Alright. Alright, fine. But because he looks really fucking terrible, not because you asked. I had learned some basic field medicine in my old life. Nothing too crazy, but enough to keep the nearby human soldiers in one piece until they could get a real medic. Thanks. Whatever. What do you need? Tweezers, some alcohol, a needle and thread. Oh, and gauze. Lots of it. On it. I just couldn't leave this guy alone with Sam, who still looked half ready to faint. As Sam scurried to get the necessary equipment, I set to work cleaning up the wound. Someone had to help him. Is that gonna be it? I don't remember how much... Oh, we got more, we got more on Sam's side of things. I left the apartment with the cell number Sam had left me, plus a few new blood stains on my jacket to show for it. Great. Turns out helping move a body takes a hell of a lot of time. I've got about 20 texts from Talia wondering where I am and why I didn't show up to her VA meeting this evening. Shit, I'd totally forgotten. Hopefully she doesn't. She won't hold a grudge for too long. Yeah, right. I woke up, groggy and disoriented, and only slightly more hopeful than before. The previous day seemed like some kind of horrifying nightmare. I could barely remember scraping the blood out from under my fingernails before falling back into bed. At least my legs were less stiff than before. I 
had something to do, a mission to complete. But another day had gone by and I hadn't made any progress on finding Imani. But first, coffee. Pulling out my phone felt like an out-of-body experience. I was activating it for what feels like the first time without the goal of a quick call. The system must be old. I haven't updated it since I was carted off. I scope out the damage. Hardware at least three years out of date and what must be a million software updates. That's why it's taking so long. Okay, I see. <laughs> Let's see what we can find. Imani, Santero, MD. It looks like she's the only person named Imani Santero. Nothing too mysterious, or any new articles, really. I scroll a bit to make sure that no weird articles are hiding at the bottom of the search results. I click to the images, only a few recent pictures pop up. She looks pretty much exactly as I remember her. Although, the last time we met, she definitely had heavier bags under her eyes. She always looked so tired. It was until we got her talking about her research. A pang struck me at the memory of her eyes lighting up, of her enthusiastic gestures as she try and explain her newest experiment to me. Not that I'd really follow it at all, I'd just like to see her talk and go on about whatever it was that she'd been investigating. She was normally so quiet and still. It was charming to see her go on and on about her research. Research? Yes. I really didn't like how scared she sounded on that voicemail. It wouldn't be any good to go around asking questions during the daytime, so I waited until nightfall trying not to think about it. I failed, miserably. Suddenly, my phone buzzes. It has to be Sam. Huh, that was fast. Oh, these outdated phones. I'm wondering how much of an influence it has on... on Farah's path. And she's helping Sam. I mean, basically we did waste some time there, right? Hmm. Well, waste, quote-unquote. Sam, come on. I'm sorry for not cutting out this stuff. It's a bit of a hassle for me, to be honest. And I'm a lazy person. And also, in case you wanted to try this for yourself, know that if this happens to you as well, you're not alone. <laughs> I'm just giving you the realistic experience, I guess. But again, I hope they, they fix it for, for the full release. Which is, by the way, going to be October 21st. They announced a date recently during the Future of Play Direct. There's also a new trailer that dropped. Very cool. So very mysterious everything. Hope you like a good mystery. I looked around for you. Might want to check back at the hospital. 
thought there might be some labs in the basement where Imani could be hiding out. Makes sense. Okay. Hey, thanks Sam. Don't tell anyone about this, alright? I mean, that kind of goes without saying, so let's just be thankful. Hey, thanks Sam. Guess I gotta put on some pants. I mean, you don't have to. The night felt chillier than usual, but Love Show was busy coming to life. The second shift of its 24 hour cycle walking or waking once again. I tried to avoid attracting attention as I headed back to the medical district. The hospital was still on the outskirts of town, but I've been there often enough at all hours not to get nervous visiting after dark. Still, I couldn't shake off the creeping feeling of anticipation that had been growing since Sam texted. Here goes nothing. I wander down to the bottom floor, trying to look casual, finally coming to an unmarked door at the very end of the bottom floor. The door was metal, solid, and most importantly, locked. And nobody seemed to be willing to open it. The lock is an older number, but not too different from the ones we were taught how to disable. Right, just like basic training. A lock to lock option? The lock looks like a weak spot. Maybe someone in the office will know how to get in. I've better down tougher doors than this. Mm, well, we don't want the attention. And what does it mean someone in the office? We don't want to ask anyone. So... A weak spot? I don't know. Having a preternatural Preternaturally, naturally, Jesus, a tough body meant I'd never met a door I couldn't kick down. Unfortunately, that also meant I definitely wasn't as good at picking locks as I was as breaking them in half. Still, it was a hospital, right? After 15 agonizing minutes with two bent up paper clips, the lock springs free. The entrance is pitch black. It sure is. <laughs> the basement was clearly part of the pre prayer foundation of the building. If there were labs down here at all, they weren't the state-of-the-art, patient-facing rooms I usually was privy to. A few motion-activated lights flicker on above me, and I feel my hands tighten into fists despite myself. Who knew who or what was down here with me? Imani? And there she is. Era? Imani looks shocked and amazed, but not quite unhappy to see me. How did you... I thought I heard the door opening. I have my ways. You managed to crack that door, didn't you? Sorry, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um... Sorry? Sorry. That's what I like about you, Farah. You can't help but be anyone but yourself. She reaches up to brush a cobweb off of the shoulder of my jacket. My shoulder tingles where she touches it. I didn't know my artificial skin could do that. She brings me over to a metal table, strewn all over with charts, test tubes and a bunch of medical equipment. I can barely tell what she's doing. For a long time I've been... Confused. 
confused about how to square the spoken reality of Love Shore with what people actually do. Huh? Same. <laughs> the as humans. The gods. Do you seriously think they're not connected? I... I don't know. You must think they are. You clearly worked hard to find me. What do you want to do? Maybe there's someone who can help us or make a call or this seems seriously illegal. Wait! I, 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 don't, I have no clue what's happening. I mean, I suppose if she's hiding down here, then it's probably something illegal. I mean, we want to support her, right? There's no service down here. And even if you did, who would you call? Persephone. You've got friends in high places, I see. More like friends of friends. She seems more at ease, more relaxed around me. Feeling bold. I pull up a stool at the table where she's showing off her, her research. It feels... intimate. I feel privileged to be able to be so close to her. It's intoxicating. I feel the need to say something back to her. Something that will let her know how I feel. I was worried about you. I want to know how I can help. I missed you. How about all three? Um... Yeah, I missed you. I... I missed you too, Farah. I realized I hadn't planned on how to follow up the statement. I scratched the back of my head, suddenly realizing that I didn't think to stop my face from flushing. So much for being an always-in-control, state-of-the-art cyborg. I didn't mean to bust in on you like this, but your voicemail was really cryptic. I know, sorry. I guess I don't do so well when I'm trying to convey urgency. She almost looks sheepish. I've never seen her so... human. You really scared me, to be honest. I know, I know. Well, you found me, didn't you? And it's justifying the means and all that. Yeah, not at the ends involve me thinking your life's in danger. She lets out a harsh laugh, not entirely jovial. Well, don't count that out just yet. What did I just say about you being cryptic? She laughs again, for real this time. It's much warmer than before, and it feels more earnest. Fine, fine. What do you need to know? Everything? Whatever you need to tell me. Ooh. I mean, I would like to know everything. Whatever you need to tell me. Whatever you need to tell me? If it was whatever you want to tell me, then I'd be inclined to choose that. But this sounds like, okay, tell me the bare minimum. So no, everything. Ambitious, but let's give it a shot. She leads me over to a board pinned with dozens of papers, charts and graphs. It's almost incomprehensible. I do a quick quick visual scan to make sure it's nothing I already have on my database. My eye scans struggle to pick out any patterns or identifiable names. All I pick out is a map of Loveshore, with areas marked out in different colors. It looks like territory. 
there are things going on here that I want you to know about. She seems serious. At least, more so than usual. Things? What kind of things? She clears off some sticky notes from the map of Lovesure my visual scans picked up, gesturing at the hall. I'm sure you recognize the map, but what you might not recognize are the regions. I know you're aware of the gods. You can see their true forms, as they really are. I can, but I'm still not sure why it's relevant. Patience is a virtue, darling. I'm getting to it. The darling part is, admittedly, distracting. I try my best to ignore it. For now. Farah, you're so gay. These regions mark the territory of the gods, as they currently are in Love Shore. How did you get this? Even as humans who can see them don't know exactly who moves where. As the saying goes, knowledge is power. She seems more than a little more than a little proud of herself. I find myself wondering if Sam has anything to do with it. But you're right. The gods are supernatural, yes, but more importantly, they retain their strongholds in the city through obscurity. They hide behind false forms, behind false fronts to their businesses, all to keep power. And to keep humans in the dark? To keep themselves safe, you mean? So, what? <laughs> hmm. Again, all three? We don't know that much about the gods in this world yet, so... Hmm. I'm leaning towards keeping themselves safe. Safe from what? They've got the means to defend themselves. They're gods, Farah. She does have a point. Okay. My research, my research, as it is now, is dangerous because I'm trying to uncover the structure of the gods' power, which has been hard enough on its own. She grits her teeth. Her normally impassive face, for once, is showing her apparently pent-up frustration. I've been threatened by a variety of agents, Farah, Which is why I need your help. I can't continue on my own. I've been stuck down here in this lab, making research plans, but I need boots on the ground. I'm guessing that's where I come in? I was thinking of your boots on the ground in particular, yes. Are you certain I'm the one to help you? I can't think of anyone I'd rather have. Well then, of course we're going to do it. Oh well, yeah, that's what we get in this demo. If you counted, we only saw three of Farah's possible love interests or just companions. Uh, Joe is the fourth one. Um, there are already pictures of them. You can check them out on the devs Twitter and they had a Kickstarter as well that has some more information on the characters as well. So feel free to check that out. But yeah, I think this was then really it for me. Uh, for me, for this demo, because this is, this is as much as we're going to get until the release in October. So yeah, again, you can check out the devs on Patreon, as you can see, or on Twitter, or I think they also have a TikTok. I don't know. Um, yeah. So once again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Which of the paths would you be more interested in? Sam or Farah? And which of the companions? I would like to hear your thoughts. And yeah, 
this is it from me. Until next time, bye bye!